All right, hey guys, this is Mr. Zare here at Landrum Middle School. Uh, today we're going to take a look at programming the medium motor uh, for the LEGO Mindstorms EV3 robot. Uh, before we do anything though, I just want to remind you, make sure you're always using your brain. Make sure you think things through. It makes life a whole lot easier if you do that. Uh, so here we have our programming window. It's already open. I have a blank project, blank program. And when it comes to the medium motor, it's extremely similar to the large motor. It's pretty much exactly the same, but we only have one programming block that deals with the medium motor, and that is this one right here. Okay, so I'm going to take this programming block and I'm going to drag and drop it and connect it to my start button or my, my uh, start programming block. Before I do anything else though, I want to make sure that I save this file. So I'm going to go to File, Save Project As, and uh, you can see I already saved a project here before with this name, so I'm just going to use that same name, Medium Motor Project. I've saved this to the, my desktop to make my life a little bit easier to find it. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to click Save. Yes, I'll go ahead and replace that. <clears throat> now, once we get to this programming block, first thing I want to always check is I want to check the port. On my robot that I built, my basic LEGO robot, my port A is reserved specifically for the medium motor, so I'd make sure that that is correct. If it's not correct, I would go through and change it to whichever port I've got it connected to. Once I've done that, we can take a look at the different options. I have an option for off, on, on for seconds, on for degrees, on for rotations. Any of those are going to be helpful to you. It just depends on what you're comfortable with. Remember, if you just turn it on and leave it on, it will not run unless there is some point in your programming that causes it to turn off. So if you just leave it on forever, you download your program, your program just won't run. Okay? So I'm just going to leave it on for rotations. Okay? And the next thing that we have is speed. And this particular motor is connected to my front kind of forklift claw action type of, uh, of device. So I don't want my speed to be very high. I'm, I'm going to drop my speed to maybe, let's say, 18. Sounds good. And the number of rotations just tells me, you know, how many times it's going to spin 100 degrees around. And the way this sets up is one whole rotation will cause my claw to really move a lot. So I'm going to decrease this to like a quarter of a rotation, which would be 0.25. Now, again, I have the same options, brake and coast, so I'm just going to keep that as it is. Now, I'm assuming that a positive speed will make my claw go up. I'm assuming that a positive speed will make my claw go up. So in this program, what I want my claw to do is to go up, and then I'm going to add in a time weight, and then I want it to go back down. So let's add in something that we haven't taken a look at yet. I'm going to go to my flow control, which is the orange tab, and I'm going to find the weight programming block. And I'm only going to use the most basic part of the weight programming block, which is time. If I actually click on this, you can see that there are tons of options here. But I'm only going to stick with time, and I'm going to make the weight three seconds. Okay, and after it waits three seconds, my claw should go up, wait three seconds, and then I want it to do the reverse of that. So I could go back to my action tab and simply drag another one, or I could simply select this one, hit Control, Copy, or C, and then hit Control, Paste, and I simply drag that over there. So the way that I did that was Control, C for Copy, and Control, V for Paste. Now, the only difference between the first programming block and the last programming block is that I don't want it to go in a positive direction. I want it to go in a negative direction. So I'm going to drag that and I'm going to drop that to negative 18. Let's just do the complete opposite. Hopefully this works. All right. I'm not 100% sure because I'm not sure exactly the orientation of the motor. Okay. Now, before I go and test this, I want to name this particular program. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to name this medium motor okay so I think that's an appropriate uh, an appropriate name for this particular program so now that I've done that I'm ready to uh, download this and and see what happens so here we go okay so I've got my 
medium motor uh, setup. I've got my program already downloaded. So we're going to test this out and see how this works. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to go to my second tab and I want to find my project folder. My project folder is medium motor project. I'm going to open that up and inside is medium motor. So I've got medium motor and so once I run this program I should see that this claw is moving up and down. So I'm going to press play and let's see what happens. Okay, went up, it should wait three seconds and then it goes down. That's exactly what I expected it to do. Okay, let's run it one more time just to make sure everything is exactly how I wanted it to be. Up for three seconds and back down. No problem. It looks like a success to me. Okay, so we've tested out our robot and exactly what we expected to have happen did happen. So you've got a, uh, an example of how to use the medium motor uh, and that was just simply using the basic robot that we've already built. Of course, there are other uses for the medium motor such as making a claw or possibly driving a conveyor belt but I do want you to understand that the differences between a medium motor and a large motor is that a large motor is going to have more torque or it's going to have more rotational force so those are going to be used to drive the entire robot and a medium motor is going to be used for kind of like ancillary items for your robot things that don't require a lot of force or rotational force now when it comes to the speed of the turning of those motors, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm willing to guess that the large motors probably spin faster than the medium motor. Don't take my word for it. So that's the medium motor, not too much uh, different than a large motor, not very complicated. All the options are pretty much the same. So with that said, I want you guys to remember, always use your brain, think it through and try to do the right thing, all right? So take it easy.